If you think a baseball bat is a pretty simple thing, well, you're out in left field. Making a bat means balancing things like weight and thickness. The material it's made of can make a difference. Metal bats hit the ball faster. However, the pros use wood bats because of league regulations, and even the type of wood might impact the score. Barry Bonds cracked a home run record in 2001 with a wood bat like this, one made of maple, instead of the usual white ash. They can never tell just by looking at it that a chunk of maple has what it takes to make a good bat. So they weigh it to make sure the wood is really as thick and heavy as it appears. Next, pointed prongs grip the wood and spin it while a carbide cutter rounds it. This is a very modern lathe called an XY machine. The rounded blank goes into a room called the library, joining others on the shelf that are waiting for their chance at the big leagues. A worker selects one of the blanks to fill an order that specifies a certain model and size. He weighs it again to make sure it measures up to what the player has ordered. The blank goes onto the XY machine and spins. A computer guides the cutter as it moves on rails and carves into the blank. It whittles two and a half centimeters of wood from the blank in order to form a handle. It takes a total of three passes on this cutter to make the rough shape of a baseball bat, but it's quick work, completed in just three minutes. Now it's time for another weighing in. The bat is substantially lighter, which is what they want. Next, he measures the end of a completed bat with a caliper. Using a square-edged scraper, he rounds the knob as the bat spins on a more traditional lathe. He measures as he cuts. With another caliper, he checks the thickness of a completed bat and compares it to the one he's just carved. Now he takes a turning tool called a skew chisel. With its pointed tip, he cuts into the bat's handle, just above the knob, to narrow the shoulder. Again, he measures as he cuts to make sure the diameter is just right. Using the skew chisel, he shapes the slope of the bat, repeatedly checking with the caliper to make sure it meets specifications. He slims down the handle a little more. Then, he angles the top of the knob with the chisel. He shapes the rest of it with a square end chisel. Next, he curves the bat's barrel using the same tool. This gets rid of sharp edges that would cause a ball's impact to ripple down and jar the player. Then he goes back to the knob and completes the shaping with the skew end chisel. Because the tool is extremely sharp, he can carve very precisely. The bat is now within 14 grams of its final weight. Using an electric sander, he smooths down some of the rough edges. He switches to a finer grit to finish off the job. As he sands, he measures, because this isn't just about getting the surface smooth. The bat has to be exactly the right size and weight for the player it's being made for. Now he places the bat's knob in an end mill. A spinning carbide disc cuts around the holes made by the pointed grippers on the lathes, producing a gentle scoop. Next, a bigger disc carves into the barrel, cupping it. Some players prefer a cupped bat because it balances differently. Now he places the bat on the scale for the final weighing, and it's exactly what the player ordered. He brushes paint onto the barrel and rubs stain into the lower half of the bat. He presses decals onto the bat so it sports both the brand name and distributor. Then he stamps the model number in gold ink and tops everything off with a light coat of varnish. Now this maple bat is ready for the big leagues and some heavy hitting.